two hour apart or inadequate at the best of times, and the site, of course, is frequently congested. And of course, we heard about aim on buses, and even though um, some of those have been taken over, it, it's still a big blow for people to get to Arrow Park. And of course, it will get considerably worse, will it not, under these proposals, with serious transportation problems for many, many patients, with the potential of severe delays affecting their health and well-being, I would suggest. Mr Mayor, the idea, of course, of a UTC, an urgent treatment centre, opening out of park, I'm sure would be welcomed, as we heard, if it was in addition to, but not at the expense of, our local services, which will be putting, I would suggest, even more pressure on the A&E <coughs> department. In other areas of the country, we hear A&E tenants figures has risen on average by 27% over the past four to five years. But in Wirral, that increase has only been 4%. Without the community walking centres, Arrow Park Hospitals, A and &E, I would suggest, would have been completely overrun. Where is the value, Mr Mayor, in, clo in closing a local service that works well and replacing it with a centralised one? Mr Mayor, people have said to me as well, were they really listening? It seems as if these current plans, may I suggest, were formulated during the Eastern campaign. That's what it sounds like, because they just come straight after that uh, brilliant campaign. It also makes you think, does it not, are we going to listen to the residents of this borough at the end of this consultation? And I have to say, Mr Mayor, based on current form, I have no great faith in that either. Because at the same time, as I've said, and as we've said in our notice of motion, at the same time as people are being asked for their views, by the way, I don't see an option uh, that says, would you like to keep them open? But at the same time as people are being consulted, the CCG have applied for a capital grant to set up a proposed urgent treatment centre at Arrow Park. So is this just a tick box exercise? That's certainly what it sounds like, well, unless we have explanation from them. Mr Mayor, we can see quite clearly the effects of this government's failed austerity, obsessed public cuts programme. Across, across the country, as a result, a total of 95 walk-in centres, 40% of the overall original number have closed since they came to power, but are due to be shut soon. One minute. Mr Mayor, it's a human consequences, the effects on people's quality of life and their well-being where austerity shows its ugly head. And nowhere is that more evident than Mill Lane and Wallasey, where at both ends of the road, one end we have Wallasey Fire Station, yeah, and the potential consequences of that, while at the other end we have the threatened NHS walking service, and the common denominator is the continuing Tory government's austerity program. <laughs> During those that defend our will NHS, to demonstrate, collect signatures, lobby and pickets to ensure a publicly owned health service continues so that people put first, not profit, and is kept in the grubby hands, I have to say, of the Tory privateers. I urge members to vote for Labour's notice of motion. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> We are actually past half past eight. Crack on then. Standing orders. Mr Mayor, I move that the standing orders be suspended to allow this debate to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a second then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You faffs around all night. Yeah. We'll support that, Mr Mayor. Yeah. So, activate the voting system. Members, please cast your votes.
Has everyone voted? Voting now closed. <coughs> Votes in favour 61. Votes against 1. Abstentions 1. It is therefore carried. So standing order is suspended. So we go to the proposer of the First Amendment. Uh, so it's Councillor Phil Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor, I can probably and rightly refer to the matter of Easton. I'll give the members some figures for briefly. In the seven months since January this year, 4,049 people from within Wirral have attended Easton Walk-in Centre, but also 1,755 people from outside Wirral, 49 from Wales, and another 283 out of the area unidentified. So 6,136 people attended Eastern Walking Centre since the start of the year. But of course, from January to April, it was operating on reduced hours. And after May, thankfully, after all party support on the council and in the community, the hours were extended. So I can say that by comparison, that whereas in April, 697 people attended, in June, it was 1,136. So the figures spread out to the local need. With regard to the proposal under consideration with regard to the UTC, we are offered these two options, but we've gone to a head. Now, UTC for 24 hours or 15 hours. If we're offered the UTC for 24 hours, it only gives eight hours a day for the community walk-ins. If we're allowed 15 hours at the UTC, it gives up to 12 hours a day. There are many uncertainties about this proposal, Mr. Mayor, including the availability of doctors. At the moment, the CCG are asking practices to open for longer hours. But it is not well advertised in the systems in its infancy. What my constituents want to know is, will it cope? A local doctor has said, this is not about taking services away from patients, it's about making it more suitable for them. Mr. Mayor, grave doubts exist about that. And the issue of transport has been referred to, and I've corresponded regularly with Mersey Travel by email and telephone calls <coughs> since our local Avon bus has disappeared, because it's very difficult for anyone in Southern Wirral to get to Clatterbridge Hospital easily now, as members of Wirral South Constituency Committee were aware. The documents from the CCG talk about transport. We have had one meeting of a transport working party since last February. One is arranged for them on November the 5th. So transport remains a difficulty. What is on offer remains a difficulty. How we will cope remains a difficulty. And none of us in Wirral South are particularly convinced of what's likely on offer at the moment. So the Council's Adult Care Committee and Children's Committee will meet on the 12th of November to start some really detailed questionings to see if the new system's up to it. One point for which the Council may divide upon is the issue of the Joint Strategic Commissioning Board. Because I've read its constitution, I've read the Howard's high-sounding phrases in the Memor of Under Memorandum of Understanding, but Mr Mayor, I'm not yet satisfied that the processes that will involve the Cabinet Member for Adult <coughs> Care and Health Cabinet Member for Children and Families and the Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport sitting on this board will deliver what our citizens expect and what this council might expect if it passes the resolution tonight. I'm not sure how Cabinet Members in that position will respond in the light of the consultation and how they will work with the CCG if that board is asked to reduce a reduced service which causes us concern. We wait to see how that develops, Mr Mayor, but in the meantime, I think we'd be wise to express a view in line with Councillor Cleary that we're not sure that replacement body is right. But the overall issue before us tonight, Mr Mayor, is the UTC right, is the walk-in replacement right, where will the children's services centres in the four districts be? And we need to have all that information to One make a proper decision, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. So, uh, <coughs> Councillor Pat Cleary to, uh, now, can now move your, your amendment. You are up to five minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I welcome the very, the very clear statement in this motion, which states this council is opposed to all forms of privatisation in the NHS. Sadly, Mr. Mayor, if the proposals for an integrated commissioning hub for Wirral Council and NHS Wirral are adopted tomorrow, then this council will in fact be opening the door to an accountable care organisation. This is widely recognised as a means of facilitating privatisation and cuts within the NHS. Mr Mayor, there can be no ambiguity about this. Throughout the associated due diligence report for tomorrow's meeting, there is reference to the development of an accountable care system. Crucially, the report concludes by saying, the introduction of an integrated commissioner with a single pool of funds will facilitate the introduction of a wider accountable care organisation across the world. Mr Mayor, if this contract goes ahead, our clinical commissioning group will be using it to procure a range of services from April 2019. Now currently, in most NHS contracts, apart from mental health, a needs-based payment is made for each individual treatment. But the new contract would pay the provider a fixed lump sum to cover the costs of a range of treatments for the whole population. Now this switch from a needs-based payment to a fixed contract is crucial. It means the introduction of demand management and rationing. Fixed capital budgets will be allocated which are no longer based on clinical need and must not be overspent. This is a clear route to a US-style care model that provides limited health care for people who cannot afford private health insurance. And Mr Mayor, a new government would be powerless to stop this because contracts would be locked in for 15 years or more. Now in mental health, we already know how this operates. Here the introduction of fixed lump sum contracts means that it is now normal for there to be no hospital beds for acute mental health patients in their own area. They are routinely taken by ambulance across the country to wherever there is a hospital bed, if one exists. Our councillors, this is not a model we should be rolling out across the health service, and certainly not in Wirral. A model that allows for price competition between providers when bidding for contracts, leading inevitably to a reduction in the quality of care and potentially a Peridian type collapse. And even if, even if an accountable care organisation is initially kept within the public sector, it would still decimate the founding principles of the NHS. ACOs represent the breaking up of a single national health service into sub-regional care packages with fixed budgets, rationed services and varying terms and conditions. Mr Mayor, there is no legislation in place forcing these changes on work. The changes are entirely voluntary. In fact, if the clear statement in this motion opposing all forms of privatisation in the NHS means anything, then we must say an emphatic and resolute no to accountable care in will. Mr Mayor, I will conclude by repeating the concluding sentence in the, um, the due diligence report for tomorrow's meeting. The introduction of an integrated commissioner with a single pool of funds will facilitate the introduction of a wider accountable care organisation across the world. Now I would urge councillors from every single party, if you care about the NHS, if you care about the founding principles of the NHS, if you care about protecting the treatment for all our residents, please support this amendment and send a clear signal to the relevant cabinet members that they should not sign and support this agreement. Thank you very much.
Um, the NHS doesn't stand still, we know that. I've worked for the NHS for 14 years out of its 70 year <coughs> existence. And I absolutely believe that healthcare must be free at the point of need and delivery should be by the NHS. A complaint I've heard from people a lot is that they can't see their GPs. People <coughs> having to wait two or three weeks for an appointment when they phone. And if the problem's urgent, they can bring their surgery from 8 o'clock in the morning. And I was talking to somebody this week who had their phone on speed dial and at the 30th time of ringing, they got through and all the emergency appointments were gone. Um, so that person went to Anna Park, went to A&E, which was not the place that was, that was best for them to be treated. Statistics show that over 50% of people who turn up at a &E don't need that service. But I think the confusion comes in for the people of Willow who don't know whether they need the GP, minor injuries, a and &E, the walk-in centre, and it gets really confusing and it's something that we really have to sort out. We know that demand on health services is increasing hugely as people are living longer, but they're often living for the last decades of life with really chronic illnesses. So we've been working as a council together with the CCG and all health partners, all NHS health partners, as well as the voluntary sector, to try and get better outcomes for patients and more accessible services, allowing patients to have more control over their own conditions, which can prevent the need for AE and hospital admissions. I would reject Councillor Cleary's amendment. The Section 75 is something totally separate to the CCG consultation, and we really do need to look at that. The Section 75 agreement that we've got at the moment only includes the Better Care Fund, which is something we've been doing, this is probably the fourth year, and care packages for people with <coughs> disabilities. We've got other Section 75 agreements in place, for instance, on other social workers who work with door to health. But we need to keep this as a separate thing, and I, I would plead with councillors those on, on the adults and children's scrutiny committees to do that, you know, really good piece of scrutiny work. One minute. And I would like all councillors to go back and encourage their residents to contribute to the consultation. But I support our motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Any further speakers? Councillor Davis. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, we. Uh, just rise, I'm just rising to support the, 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 Labour, the, the Labour motion and um, uh, I don't want to repeat what colleagues have said but I, I, I do think um, sadly the CCG haven't learned the lessons about the, the way the Eastern Walking Centre issue was handled and um, uh, I think the documentation that came out with the consultation was not, not very clearly it, did give, it does give the impression that those community facilities will be lost and I think we are rightly uh, saying that um, they are valued, they're valuable and they should remain and we've heard from Andy McGarney and his colleague that, that, that the, the uh, popularity and the, the value that that provides uh, that minor injuries walking centre in um, one of the most deprived parts of the world provides so we should stand against these uh, any move to close these facilities. I just want to speak against Pat <coughs> Leary's um, uh, amendments. Pat, you're absolutely you're dead wrong really with, with everything you said. The, the agreement that uh, no, you're wasn't. talking about relates to a bundle of services which have been fu uh, uh, functioning now for a number of years. They are about things like helping to get uh, people out of hospital into the community. It's for a one year uh, period. It doesn't include the big Kind of hospital contracts, which uh, I agree do need to be looked at, and I think you know we are equally against ACOs and ACSs, and we equally want to make sure that the um, the major part of the CCG budget is scrutinised before we enter into any agreements around those issues. But the um, uh, Section 75 agreement that you're talking to talking about does not have any of those features associated with it. Will not lead to privatisation. What the, the danger is if we don't look at it, is that those people who um, currently are funded uh, to get out of hospital into the community 
that that funding may be at risk if we don't sign that agreement. So please, you either deliberately or accidentally misled people. Uh, that agreement needs to be signed so we can continue. We can continue to provide those services and, and let's make sure that we clearly tell people what that is about, not what the, the contribution that you've made. So support our motion and particularly uh, we want to uh, speak against the, the motion moved by that clearly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Uh, Councillor Chris Cavalier. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm actually asking us to lock, Mr Mayor, to understand that the uh, so-called consultation with the only option on the table, is, which is option one. Um, or option one with a few extra hours on. Um, I've also filled in the questionnaire which is so designed to favour it and you can well, you guess it, so favour option number one. Um, it appears to me that this is to be a manager to get health and social care, to deliver cuts, rationing and opening doors for further privatisation for the NHS. To respond to a funding crisis by reorganisation in my opinion is full hard to say the least. Every speech I've heard seems to start by taking the talking of the integration of health and social care as the ultimate panacea to solve the crisis in the NHS. They start emphasising the need to balance the books and to meet specific targets such as AE access times, and we need to move beyond the financial challenge to reach a point whereby general practice gains from this rather than loses everything that's been held so dear by the public for decades. It appears that more reorganisation is inevitable. It's already happening with the demise of the CCGs, changing health economies such as the devolution of Manchester, integrated care organisations, ICOs, development of accountable care organisations which you mentioned ACOs, it's already happening and at a great speed. The speed of this, with these changes being made, will not allow any evaluation of their effects or indeed for them to be implemented properly. They will, however, provide a smoke screen to high rationing and healthcare and dismantle a proven model of traditional general practice from public view. Yes, you'll be able to access any GP and will. But what about continuity of care for long-term illnesses and having confidence in your own GP who knows you personally and has knowledge of you as a patient? I've read the Age of Case Care Review uh, and under the heading, what does this data tell us about urgent and emergency care and the following quick subheadings? Um, GP appointments. Uh, the answer is we do not know when it's one last year in GP appointments. GP appointments reason for use, we do not know the reasons for the reasons of use. Ambulance service, we do not have the reasons for conveyances to AME. X-rays, we have an activity for the number of X-rays ordered at BCH, but are quite unclear if these X-rays were attendees are minor safety services only. So my question is, how then will our park manage? When, when it's only walking centre left open, and how high will the referral rates go when they are inundated <coughs> patients from the other four closed centres? Transport is a huge issue, as is parking and a park. How will it cope with the extra traffic and patient throughput? And but as it says, most of them will go to the GP. As many here are aware, practices of private businesses who are also going to be offered, or supposedly offering, eight to eight, seven days a week. I asked the CCG representative who gave a presentation at the Will Centre constituency meeting, stating that GPs would pop in how many had actually opted in. Up. And the answer was a handful so far. So, given what data there is, and the will the urgency and emergency care, it comes no surprise that no figures have come for the ones I have asked for what the increases have been on the closed case of the walking centre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on behalf of the Conservative Group, can I uh, thank the contributors who brought forward their evidence and their views on, on this issue. Uh, on reading the mo uh, motion that was put forward by Councillors Hackett and Fouts, uh, it certainly looked as though the scrutiny committee chaired by Councillor McManus was going to look at this issue in some detail, proving why we have a scrutiny uh, committee. And it's certainly one of the, one of the meetings uh, that I will be attending, and I look forward to the work of all members of that committee getting into detail uh, with some of the answers. Some of the points that have been raised that we've heard tonight, Mr Mayor, uh, are, cannot be answered by councillors because this is a proposal by the CCG. I think that what this does prove, yet again, is that there is a very strong argument for the clinical commissioning groups to be brought within democratic oversight of a local authority. Uh, I think if uh, decisions such as this are being taken, 
clearly affects people's lives so directly there is an argument for the people to be able to vote on those issues directly at the ballot box. So I would certainly be in favour of seeing some sort of democratic control being brought in for the CCTs, as they were as they were for the PCTs brought in by the previous Labour government, which equally had no democratic oversight. Uh, Mr Mayor, we have a Health and Wellbeing Board, but I think the Leader of the Council would agree that the attendance of the Health and Wellbeing Board has at best been patchy by the various organisations, uh, certainly over the last two years. And hopefully, again, this would be an issue that we can address at the Health and Wellbeing Board for that. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm finished by saying I did attend a meeting uh, chaired by Councillor Green uh, at the uh, World West Constituency Committee where there was a presentation on the proposals that are before us tonight, and I would commend uh, the work of Jackie Evans, uh, a member of the Council, uh, and a very good presentation that she gave, a very, very forthright presentation, answered the questions I felt. Uh, some people may not like the answers, but she had all the information that people wanted, and I very much hope that uh, Councillor McManus will ensure that uh, Jackie Evans is present uh, at the overview and scrutiny committee for that. Um, I would finish by saying Councillor Hackett's speech, uh, being slightly off script, I think, um, I'm not sure whether he uh, has got a selection meeting coming up, but it's clearly tacking to the left of what he said, as opposed to what's written uh, in the motion before us. But certainly from, on behalf of the Conservative group, there's nothing in the Labour Party motion uh, that we have before us uh, that you could disagree with. And certainly the final point that all healthcare should be free at the point of need, as it has been for the 43 years that the NHS has been under a Conservative government. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lewis. Oh, oh, members, members, please, please. Members, no. Members! For the record, Councillor Lewis, I think you meant Jackie Evans, an officer of the Council. What did I say to you? Member. Yeah, yeah, officer. Right, thank you. Any further speakers? No. So, straight to seconders then. Uh, Councillor Dave Mitchell, you now have up to three minutes to speak to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, I start off by basically agreeing with one of the comments Councillor Hackett made. I, I believe personally it's a desktop review in relation to this. Well, when the CCG came to East for the first time uh, prior to the closure, when they were presenting the case to the three ward councillors, we, we pointed out to them that they, that they realised that the buses at that time had been altered and the bus routes had changed completely. Uh, the, lead, the lead officer from the CCG turned to a colleague and said, why didn't I know that? Mm -hmm. But they still closed the clinic the next, the next week. This, this is quite true what you're saying. Uh, the presentation by Dr. Moutine was absolutely spot on. I go back to when we had an AME at Clashbridge Hospital, which was the first start of the problems that we had in the southern part of the peninsula. After the uh, class of the day, I was down there, all transferred to our park for the major services. We as ward councillors campaigned constantly for a service at the southern end of the peninsula. Because when you look at the out outreach that there is at the moment, five of them are in the north of the peninsula. And I know the north of the peninsula is, is heavily densely populated. But when you look at the, the amount of figures that were going in and the usages, Councillor Dolchris mentioned again. Uh, Mr. Dr. Mantini's uh, colleague, which now I did quite catch, stated that over 8,000 people were coming to the out of hours clinics throughout the world. And Phil, 80, thank you. Uh, Phil, quite like you said, you look at all that storm in East, uh, there's over 4,000 people going in there uh, on a regular basis. But they're actually drawing money into the local health services because people from outside of but attending and actually gaining revenue from other health authorities to do that. The main reason and argument behind the whole process and the argument we put forward in our amendment to this is, is that we definitely need to keep community facilities um, and this is basically to prevent gridlock at a park. Uh, Councillor Cadrupi had just said when you look at what's happening and what's going forward the amount of people that came into the Eastern Clinic over the last year, I think mean, about 46,000 people were prevented from going onto our park. And I think the major problem that they had is because they didn't have the quality of nurses or the elite commission nurses to do the 
uh, <coughs> settlements. That's why it took them over these things to do that. We've got a major problem in that in, uh, CCG and the NHS are saying RGPs are going to do this problem or sort this problem out for us. It didn't because once our park had closed, if you look at the southern parts of the peninsula, on a Monday, and I agree with the comments that Christine made, if you try and get in touch with the GP on Monday, it's That's impossible. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. So now, um, <coughs> Councillor Mike Sullivan, you have up to three minutes to speak to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the reason I, I seconded this amendment from Pat, and I agree with what, what Pat said, um, my concern is the privatisation of the NHS. I stand here as a, as a committed socialist, and I'm deeply against what this Tory government are doing. The cuts in the NHS are bad enough. Um, we've just had a summer crisis within the NHS, and I don't need a crystal ball to say there's going to be a monumental winter crisis in the NHS. And there's two reasons for that, Mr Mayor. One is severe lack of funds, no matter what the Tories say, the amount that they put in, it's not enough, it's as simple as that. And the other thing that's causing the acute crisis within our NHS is the privatisation. When people like Richard Branson can take two billion pounds out of our NHS of public money, there's something wrong. Now I seconded this motion tonight and I do, I do um, sympathise with the Labour group and the Labour leader and I thank Graham Hodgson, Hodgkinson for his comprehensive um, report that he gave Pat and I before this meeting outlining why um, the Labour group felt, I think it is, he's going to sign the contract which covers the next six, uh, 12 months only. But my concern is, and I, I welcome it going to adult social services and children's social services for scrutiny, because what we should be looking at, and what the scrutiny committee should be looking at, is where the money's going. Who are the providers? And Pat clearly outlined there about the fixed contracts, so there's only a maximum amount of money that can be spent on a patient. And that's Amazing. taking away the care element. If a patient goes over that maximum amount of spend, there'll be mo no money there for them unless they can pay themselves. That's the reason that I seconded this motion tonight, and I urge all members, particularly the great the Labour group, um, we've got to be careful of privatisation within the NHS. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. And now for the second of the motion, Councillor Steve Fax, you have up to three minutes to speak to the motion. Okay, thank you, Mr Mayor. I was going to say when I started, uh, I wasn't going to get distracted by this, this amendment because I believe uh, my impact on amendments is very distracting for those people who are genuinely talking about the arguments about accessibility to services. You never once in your vote debate mentioned any one of the centres that were closing or threatening closure. And it's a distraction. And the patients who the virtual not to be distracted from what is a complicated question and a consultation. So most people have spoke about different locations around the border. Very close to my heart is the one in Lair Street, many, many in centre. Uh, I was born about 100 yards up the road, and when that centre was being built, it was like a, a beacon, it was like a, a light shining on that community. For the first time, that area, that poor area of Birkenhead, North of Birkenhead, where it was brought up, was having the focus of healthcare, most modern healthcare facilities being brought into their doorstep. And people like Adam Mangani, who's an actual local health hero in my book, has led, led this, and this is now a risk. And that's what we are going to lose if we don't get this consultation right, if we don't get the message simple for the public to understand and to lobby and make sure it doesn't go wrong. Because what we would lose, what, uh, what we would lose is the only 365 day service that runs from the GP surgery in the will, a centre that deals with 20,000 patients plus. The only service that looks after children under the year, age one. The only service using modern technology such as tele-ECG. 
where 100% of patients are seen within 90 minutes and over 90% are seen within 30 to 40 minutes. The cost of the service to go to the Medium Centre runs at about an average of £20 per patient per visit. In the other walking centres, maybe a bit more complicated care, £45, but a and &E cost is up at £80. So financially it makes sense, accessibility it makes sense. And how are people from Claude and how are people from the North End going to get up to our park when the GP says we know a full and they can't get the bus? This, this centre attracts people from all over, 2,000 from Million, 1,200 from Claude, 1,150 from Cavendish, 800 from Devani, 1,300 from St. Cats, and so on and so forth. Because it's accessible, it's on a major bus route, and it is directly opposite the Arena Depot. And people can get there, and this says they can get there and go there. They also offer preventative care where people come through the door. It's not just about a minor injury, a minor illness. It's a doorway. It's an access to health care. And this area of town, the, the, the stats are you will die. You will die 12 years, 12 years younger than people in the more affluent areas of the borough. Well, how are we going to tackle health in the poor areas if we take those health services away from those poor areas? It's nonsensical and wrong. And it's a very old joke, very poor joke. Uh, and it's, it's not funny, but you know, the, the old one. If you want to live long, get in Birkenhead, move to Colby when you're 70. Not very funny. It's not a laughing matter. These people are not going to be deprived of healthcare on the doorstep. I would urge you not to divert the argument into strange, stupid, weird, wonderful things. Fight these closures. Get out there and campaign and protest. Save the Million Health Centre. So, um, Councillor Pat Hackett has proposed an original motion. You have the right of reply up to five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of um, comments, if I may, on, on what's been said in no particular. Order. Uh, just comments on what Councillor Lewis says. I, I really do think he belittles the seriousness of the debate by getting the, by personalising uh, the, the, the arguments uh, that we were debating tonight. Uh, and I'm, I'm very surprised with him. Um, regarding the lid downs, I mean, we've got no problem with your, with your, uh, with your yeah, with, with dimensions. You spoke well on it. Um, but the one I have to say, I have to talk about, is both Pat Cleary and Mike Sullivan. As Councillor Bout said, um, uh, Councillor Cleary started off by saying, did he not, that he welcomes the motion. But thank you very much for that. But then he ignored most of it in his amendments. In fact, he didn't say a thing about, about this in his amendments. And neither did Councillor Sullivan, I have to say. Not a thing. Um, re I'm, re I'm reading the amendments. I have to say, Councillor Sullivan, we stick here on this side to our socialist <coughs> principles. And I have to say, we could not be any stronger, any stronger in what we're saying in our notice of motion. As we can see in number seven, where we say, this council opposes all forms of privatisation in the NHS and totally opposes the introduction of any privateers, yeah, into our local health service, be they based in the UK, America, or domiciled elsewhere. And particularly, Council Sullivan and Council Cleary, in number eight, where we say no contract should be signed with the CCG that leads to priors, non NHS organisations running NHS services or leads to a reduction <coughs> in services. How much stronger do you want us to be? Don't you trust us, Council Cleary? <laughs> <laughs> with any width of anything that sells off or privatises, as has been said by colleagues, any part of the NHS created by this, the Labour Party. And as the family father once said at Great Socialist Night Bevin, yeah, the NHS will last as long as the folk left with the faith to fight for it. And that is what this party and its notice of motion is doing and will continue to do, continue to do, the fight for the NHS, and I urge all, as I said earlier, to join the Defend Our NHS World Group campaigning, lobbying, and picketing against these proposals. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Packham.
packet. Did I hear that you were accepting the Liberal Democrat amendment? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so, we now need to vote on the second amendment by Councillor Pat Cleary. So, open the voting. Members, please cast their votes. Pressing my green button here, and it's showing up there as red. All right. I stand corrected. I stand corrected, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> well, voting. Has everyone voted? Voting now closed. Votes in favour seven. Votes against 54, abstentions 1. The amendment is therefore lost. So now we come to the substantive motion as amended. Uh, so. Is that the card vote? Card vote. Okay. So is the voting system activated? Yes. So, members, now listen for your name to cast your votes as you can hear your name. Thank you, members. Councillor Anderson? For. Councillor Bowie? For. Councillor Bird? Councillor Bird? Councillor Stapleton, Councillor Stewart, oh. 